Why Shalom, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bar Hashem, Chachadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. A sincere Shalom to you, Akim, who be pushing this word around the globe in faith and in truth and in sincerity. As always, I'm going to start by saying we are the real Hebrew Israelites. The true Israelites, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, West Africans, and so on and so forth. We are the true descendants of the man in the Bible who was named Israel, and therefore we are the Israelites. But this word isn't just for the people I mentioned above. Um, this also applies to anybody who may look like any of the other nations, but if they believe on this word in faith and in truth and in sincerity and believe in the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, then you too might also be an Israelite because Israel has been scattered amongst all nations during all our captivities, so therefore we're going to look like all peoples. However, your seed line is determined, or your seed line, which is your nationality, is determined by the lineage of your fathers. So if your father goes back to the man named Israel in the Bible, then you are an Israelite, no matter what you look like. And if you'd like to learn more about uh, the nations which come under the 12 tribes, just Google GMS 12 tribes sign and you'll be able to learn more. So I'm going to do another lesson on uh, something that's been coming out recently. I've heard a few brothers doing uh, lessons on this and Apostle Tahar put up a video on it as well. This is this ID2020 uh, event or website. Now this is basically related to the mark of the beast which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 13 verses uh, 15 through 17 I believe if I'm not mistaken. I'll get those verses in a minute. But the mark of the beast is basically the RFID implantable microchip and Esau, which is the so-called white people. You're not really white, you're actually red because your blood shows forth through your skin. And your forefather is Esau in the Bible, so therefore you are the Edomites. This is what Esau's pushing in order to enslave everybody under his new world or the system. Uh, so basically, let's read a bit of this website. It says, um, ID2020. Identity data is outside of individual control. Protections for privacy are insufficient. Identity is neither portable nor persistent. And it says 1.1 billion people worldwide live a life, live without a digital ID. Obviously, Esau is looking to change that because he's going to uh, microchip the vast majority of the population. The only people who are going to resist this mark of the beast are going to be the 144,000 elect men of Israel and one third of Israel. Two thirds of Israel are going to be destroyed, as will most of you 17 other nations. So before I go any further, let me just get some scriptures for edification's sake. I'm going to pull up uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. I'm looking at yeah, Revelation 13 and 9, yeah. All right, let me start from Revelation 13 and 13. No, let me start from Revelation 13 and 14, Slakia. Uh, and he de and deceiveth them which dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image unto the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. Now the beast that's being spoken of is the second Roman Empire, which is what we're living in now. The first Roman Empire fell, and it, had, it was mortally wounded, but it's risen up again, and that's what we're living in now, the Second Roman Empire. Verse 15, it says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image should speak, and as should cause as many as that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right, so basically anybody who doesn't fall in line with the system is going to be put to death. And it says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now in Revelation 14 and 9, it tells you the judgment that will be bestowed upon all those who take this mark. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. 
and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now what that's talking about is when Yahushai comes back in the so-called UFOs, which are actually IFOs, they're the chariots of Israel, he's going to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire pertaining to Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. Not only that, this world's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. So those that get, don't get burnt up by Yahushua and the chariots are going to get burnt up by the thermonuclear destruction for taking the mark of the beast. So let's get back to this website. And it says, we need to get digital ID right. Identity is vital for political, economic and social opportunity. But systems of identifications are, are, are archaic insecure, lack adequate privacy protection, and for over a billion people, inaccessible. Digital identity is being defined now, and we need to get it right. The ID2020 Alliance is setting the course of digital ID through multi-stakeholder partnership, ensuring digital ID is, resp and is responsibly implemented and widely accessible. Look at this, man. This is, this is prophecy in action, man, right in your fucking face. These scriptures don't lie, man. We are, it says, funding and implementing digital identity protect projects to improve lives, shaping the market by defining parameters for good digital ID, advocating for ethical approaches to digital ID. So it says closing the identity cap is an enormous challenge. It will take the work of many committed people and organisations coming together across different geographies, sectors and technologies. But it's exciting to imagine a world where safe and secure digital identities are possible, providing everyone with an essential block, building block to every right and opportunity they deserve. That's Peggy Johnson, Executive VP Business Development Microsoft Corporation. So Microsoft is pushing this stuff, which is no surprise because Microsoft, Microsoft are one of the biggest... Um, computer hardware and software manufacturers and obviously the hardware and the software is going to be tied into this technology but I want to pull up um, a precept because it's talking about safe identity protection let me just get a precept here if I may bear with me Yeah, I found it. So let me read this part again. It says, closing the identity gap is an enormous challenge. It will take the work of many, many committed people and organisations coming together across different geographies, sectors and technologies. But it is, 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 but it is exciting to imagine a world where safe and secure digital identities are possible, providing everyone with an essential building block to every right and opportunity that they deserve. So that's basically saying, if you're not part of this system, you're not going to have certain rights and certain opportunities, if you can read between the lines here. Furthermore, I want to get a scripture, a precept to go along with what it says here. It says, but it is exciting to imagine a world where safe and secure digital identities are possible. So for that, I'm going to bring up First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 3. There we are. This is First Thessalonians 5 and 3, and it says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Oh, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that, that they should overtake you as a thief. Because it says the day of the Lord's going to come as a thief in that night. And that day is coming very, 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 soon uh ye are the children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor the darkness therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober so basically us reporting on shit like this is us watching and being sober and vigilant because we know that satan our adversary uh move move as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour roughly paraphrasing so i'm going to quote this again it says but it is exciting to imagine a world where safe and secure digital identities are possible, providing everyone with an essential building block to every right and opportunity that they deserve. 
I'm going to read this again. First, First Thessalonians 5 and 3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet and the hope of salvation. For Yahweh have not appointed us to wrath, but but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yahweh Shahu Mashiach, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even, even as also ye do. So that's what we're doing by putting up these video epistles. We're edifying the elect, Lord willing. So let's see if I can get a bit more information in this uh, website. What's, what's going on up here? About, let's see, about overview. Okay. The ID2020 Alliance is setting the course of digital ID. ID2020 is coordinating funding for identity and channeling those funds towards high impact projects, enabling diverse stakeholders, United, Nation, United Nations agencies, NGOs, governments and enterprises to pursue a coordinated approach that creates a pathway for efficient and responsible implementation at scale. Man, all you all you other camps who are trying to say that the mark of the beast ain't RFID chip, you're full of shit, man. Let me read this again for edification's sake, man. This is this 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 is prophecy in action, man. Shit's happening now. Cause once this RFID chip comes down, it's 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 game over, man. So it says the ID twenty twenty alliance is setting the course of digital ID. ID2020 is coordinating funding for identity and channeling those funds towards high-impact projects, enabling diverse stakeholders, United Nations agencies, NGOs, governments and enterprises to pursue a coordinated approach that creates a pathway for efficient and responsible implementation at scale. Through its partners, ID2020 is driving multi-stakeholder collaboration to set the future course of digital ID. As an alliance, we work to ensure that safety, security, interoperability and individual control are built into digital ID systems by design. The alliance leverages a market-based approach to ensure that good digital ID is available, ethical and fit for purpose for all users. We fund high impact projects in order. Now, when they say high impact, they mean they're going to this thing's going to be um affecting as many people as possible that's that's what they mean by high impact if it was low impact it would be a small test trial of maybe 25 people here or 22 people there no they're they're looking to 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 cast as broad a net as possible to snare the people because Esau knows that you have but a short time i think that's revelation 12 and 12 let me get that revelation 12 and 12 man these scriptures are beautiful man this truth is beautiful there we go. There's this Revelation 12 and 12 and it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Now the devil that is speaking of there is the deceiver which is the adversary which is Esau Edom who's coming after the workings of the spiritual demon Satan. Because that's who he worships. So let's get back to this article. See if there's any more meat here. We fund high impact projects in order to answer critical questions and improve lives through digital identity while working to influence public policy and technical standards development. It says, right, these are the people who are locked into this thing. These are the organisations. So you've got Microsoft here who I, who I recognise. I think I've seen the Rockefeller Foundation. Now that comes as no surprise because um, was it Nick Rockefeller who was talking to Aaron Russo about their desire to microchip the population? Um, I don't know if I recognise. Oh, Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Okay, 
This is going to be tied into vaccines too. So this is all going down, man. Um, ID 2020 is a US registered 501c. <laughs> Ain't that funny? A lot of them churches have these 501c charters. Three, based in New York, NY. Um, all right, so I want to get... Let's see what its principles are. Alliance partners share the belief that identity is a human right and that individuals must have ownership over their own identity. Hang on a minute. When did your own identity ever become in question? Like, let's say your name's Jim and, you know, you, you, you was born and your name's Jim and you've gone your whole life caught being named Jim. Why on earth would your identity ever be in threat or in question? Doesn't make any sense. So it says, furthermore, agreement to a shared set of principles lays the groundwork for the Alliance success. So I suspect that those agreed principles are that everyone by um, law must have an RFID chip implanted into them, even into their, into their body at some area, namely be in their hand or in their forehead. So it says the Alliance Manifesto, it says one, the ability to prove one's identity is a fundamental and universal human right. Two, we live in a digital area, sorry, we live in a digital era, so like, yeah. Individuals need a trusted, verifiable way to prove who they are, both in the physical and online and world online. So lucky. Yeah. Let me read that again. Because I see it in me, man. Point two, it says we live in a digital era. Individuals need a tr who the fuck are you to tell us what we need, man? It says we need to we live in a digital area in era. Individuals need a trusted, verifiable way to prove who they are, both in the physical world and online. Three, over one billion people worldwide are unable to prove their identity through recognised means. What kind of madness is this? As such, they are without the protection of law and are unable to access basic services, participate as citizens or voter or transact in the modern economy. This is the mark of the beast. Most of those affected are children and adolescents. Oh, fuck, man. So they're going to be pushing this, ch this chip hard on your children. I bet it's going to come to a point where, let's say your woman has a baby at the hospital. The first thing they're going to be doing is trying to put an RFID chip, RFID chip in the baby's hand. Let me read this again, man. Point three. Over one billion people worldwide are unable to prove their identity through any recognised means. As such, they are without the protection of the law and are unable to access basic services participate as citizens or voter or transact in the modern economy. Most of those affected are children and adolescents and many are refugees forcibly displaced or stateless persons. Point four. For some, including refugees, the stateless and other marginalised groups, reliance on a national identification system isn't possible. This may be due to exclusion, inaccessibility or risk or because the credentials they do hold are not broadly recognised. While we support efforts to expand access to national identity programmes, we believe it is imperative to complement such efforts by providing an alternative to individual individuals lacking safe and reliable access to state-based systems. So let me play this video. Actually, hang on. Let me go through these points and then I'll come back to the video. It says, point five, we believe that individuals must have control over their own digital identities, including how personal data is collected, used and shared. Everyone should be able to assert their identity across institutional and national borders. So when it's talking about institutional, I suppose if you want to go to ESOL's institutions such as universities or schools or whatever, you're probably going to have to have an RFID chip because... Um, that's the way things are going. <laughs> Esau's coming down hard with the, with this shit, man. So let's let's continue. It says, um, we believe that individuals. This is point five again. Should have control over their own digital identities, including how personal data is collected, used, and shared. Everyone should be able to assert their identity across institutional and national borders, across time, and across time. Privacy portability and persistence are necessary 
for digital identity to meaningfully empower and protect individual individuals. Fuck you, Esau, man. Fuck you, man. Point six, it says, digital identity carries a significant risk if not thoughtfully designed and carefully implemented. Hmm. Let me get a scripture here. Hang on. All right. I found a scripture, but let me continue here for a moment. Um, point six, it says, digital identities carry a significant risk if not thoughtfully designed and carefully implemented. Okay, let me get this scripture. I'm going to get Ezekiel 28 and chat. Ezekiel 28 and uh, three, I want to get. And maybe I'll get some more in Ezekiel once I finish this article, but let's get it for now. Where are we? Ezekiel 28 and 3. This is speaking of Edom, yeah? It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So this is Esau's crafty counsel, you know, because where it says they, it, they have to carefully be implement this shit, they're trying to be crafty about it. So Ezekiel 28 and 3, it says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. See, Esau is a proud man. Yeah? You Edomites are a proud nation. Therefore, thus saith the Hawa power, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the Most High, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the, the, the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death of them as they are slain, that are slain in the midst of the seas. Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am the Most High, but thou shalt be a man, and no God, and in the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken, it saith, the most high power. So, you know, Esau is going down. And he's going down. Esau's going to fall as fast as lightning. So let's get back into this uh, article. Verse 6, continuing on, it says, We do not underestimate the risks of data misuse and abuse, particularly when digital identity systems are designed as large centralized databases. Point seven, technical design can mitigate some of the risks of digital identity. Emerging technology, for example, cryptographically secure, decentralized systems could provide greater privacy protection for users while also allowing portability and verif verifiability. But widespread agreement on principles, technical design patterns and interoperability Interoperability standards is needed for decentralized digital identities be, to be trusted and recognized. Point eight, it says, this better model, to, model of digital identity will not emerge spontaneously. In order for digital identities to be broadly trusted and recognized, we need sustained and transparent collaboration aligned around the, these shared principles, along with support, supporting regulatory and policy frameworks. Point nine, ID2020 Alliance partners jointly define functional requirements, influencing the course and technical um, innovation and providing a route to technical interoperability, therefore trust and recognition. These, these are key words because they're trying to win over the minds of the masses, which won't be hard because the masses are dumb as fuck, but um, they're sleep led to the, sheep led to the slaughter. But Esau's going in hard, man. Um, point 10 The ID2020 Alliance recognises that taking these ideas to scale requires a robust evidence base which will inform advocacy and policy As such, ID2020 Alliance supported pilots 
are designed around a common monitoring and evaluated framework. Right, so let's see what this... Um, um, there was an art, wasn't there a video somewhere? Here we are, let's see if we can play this. The ability to prove one's identity is a fundamental and universal. Here you have the so-called, <laughs> here you have the so-called nigger woman up, up here fronting on this ID20 for Esau, man. Ain't this, this is a flipping joke, man. <laughs> it couldn't be any more ironic, man. <sighs> there we go. Human right. We live in a digital era. Individuals need a trusted, verifiable way to prove who they are. Both in the physical world and online. Over one billion people worldwide are unable to prove their identity through any recognized means. As such... Now, these people are all reading off the same script card. But what Esau's trying to do is put as many faces as possible saying the same thing. Because when you're... The ignorant masses here, yeah, they, they're not wise to how advertising and things like this work. But, you know... Yahaba, Shem Shai for waking me up to this... Knowledge, wisdom and understanding and having the spirit to see through these things. Basically, what's happening in this clip is that they're all reading off the same script. But Esau's trying to put as many different faces as possible to say the exact same thing because it gives the illusion of unity. Yeah. If it was just one man here talking this script, you'd look at it and think, OK, well, this one man, this is just one man's idea or one man's opinion. But when you have multiple faces saying the same thing, speaking the same script, it gives power to... Um, what's being said and the ignorant masses will follow the masses the scriptures say thou shall not follow a multitude to do evil and we get that here we go this is exodus uh 23 and 2 Okay, the scriptures say, Exodus 23 and 2, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Yeah? So we're not supposed to follow the masses. Let's get back into this uh, video. Such, they are without the protection of law and are unable to access basic services, participate as a citizen or voter, or transact in the modern economy. La mayoría de esos afectados son niños y adolescentes. Muchos de ellos son refugiados, desplazados forzosos o personas sin país. For some, including refugees, the stateless, and other marginalized groups, reliance on national identification systems isn't possible. This may be due to exclusion, inaccessibility, or risk, or because the credentials they do hold are not broadly recognized. While we support efforts to expand access to national identity programs, we believe it is imperative to complement such efforts by providing alternatives to individuals lacking safe and reliable access to state-based systems. We believe that individuals must have control over their own digital identities, including how personal data is collected, used, and shared. Everyone should be able to assert their identity across institutional and national borders and across time. La privacidad, la portabilidad y la persistencia son necesarias para que la identidad digital empodere y proteja a las personas de manera importante. Digital identity carries significant risk if not thoughtfully designed and carefully implemented. We do not underestimate the risks of data misuse and abuse, particularly when digital identity systems are designed as large, centralized databases. Technical design can mitigate some of the risks of digital identity. Emerging technology, for example, cryptographically secure, decentralized systems, could provide greater privacy protection for users, while also allowing... Now, you've got a hell of Edomites up in here. I've seen a couple of, uh, you know, Hispanic or Latino women up in here. You've got, obviously, the nigger woman Eve up in here. Um, I'm assuming she's Eve. I don't know, maybe she's a Hamite, but... The point is, is they seem to be pushing it hard and Esau seems to be going the hardest in this. Now, here we go. This is a so-called white guy. Yeah, so-called because white is, the terms white and black are made up terms. If you look at his shirt, it's white. 
if you look at the background, it's off-white, sort of grey. What colour is his face? Is it white? No, it's red. Therefore, Edom is his name. Let me get that in the scriptures. I think that's Genesis chapter 36. Let me get it. Genesis 36. Yep, there you go. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Yep. Revelation, so Genesis 36 and 9. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. There you go. Let me get Genesis 25. Maybe it's going to give a little bit more elaboration because Jacob and Esau struggle together in the womb. I don't want to get too far off topic. Um, it's lucky that we get that. Twenty-five. Here we go. Here we go. These are ge the generations of Isaac. Genesis twenty-five and nineteen. Abraham's son Isaac begat Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel and the Syrian, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren, and Yahweh was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her and said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Um, and when her days were to, to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And behold, the first came out red, all over, like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now in the Hebrew, Esau, the word there for Esau is Isashua, which means wasted away is he. And the reason why they called him wasted away is he is because he had no melanin in his skin. At that time, everybody had melanin in his skin with dark skin. Esau was the, um, the first person to come out with biblical leprosy. You know, and that's going back to what the mark of Cain was, which was put on Cain in Genesis, the fourth chapter, I believe. Um, but I don't want to get too deep into that. Just going back into um, the mark of the beast, I want to stay on topic. But I'm just pointing out that how you have these Edomites pushing this mark of the beast. For portability and verifiability. But widespread agreement on principles, technical design patterns and interoperability standards is needed for decentralized digital identities to be trusted and recognized. This better model of digital identity will not emerge spontaneously. In order for digital identities to be broadly trusted and recognized, we need sustained and transparent collaboration aligned around these shared principles, along with supporting regulatory and policy frameworks. ID2020 Alliance partners jointly define functional requirements, influencing the course of technical innovation and providing a route to technical interoperability and therefore trust and recognition. The ID2020 Alliance recognizes that taking these ideas to scale requires a robust evidence base which will inform advocacy and policy. As such, RD2020 Alliance supported pilots are designed around a common monitoring and evaluation framework. We humbly recognize that this is no easy task, but we see urgency as a moral imperative. This is why we have set ambitious targets and why we hold ourselves to account. Hmm. ID Summit 2018, it says, I thought this was a uh... Well, that must be an old video. So Esau must have been on it on this for some time. But, you know, I made the points. Let's clear this one up. So let's see what we're doing here. I'm going to get these scriptures again for edification's sake and tell people what's going on. So Revelation 13, 15. So basically, this is the mark of the beast, the RFI implant, RFID implantable microchip. In some countries, it's called the NFID near field identification i believe but basically this is the mark of the beast that's spoken of here in revelation chapter 13 and verse uh, 15 i'm going to read it i'm going to start at 14 and deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had to do the power in the sight of the beast saying that to them that dwell on the earth 
that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls if, here's the point, Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls if all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Now the judgment for taking that mark of the beast is this, Revelation 14 and 9. And it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without indignation. So it's like, it's like let me start again. Revelation 14 and 10. The same shall drink, let me start again. Revelation 14 and 9, the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So as I said, that's talking about when the so-called UFOs come and they um, start blasting this place to smithereens. And also the thermonuclear destruction, which is going to take place via the nuclear missiles, which is going to turn America into a practically a lake of fire. That's what's, that's what's being spoken of. Now, there's a mark that's being put on the men that are sighing and crying for the abominations that are being seen, which is basically the men of the Lord. So Ezekiel chapter 9, and force, Ezekiel 9 and 4 goes into this. Here we are. Chapter 9, verse 4. See, this is the opposite mark. This mark is being spiritually put upon the 144,000 men of elect men of Israel and the one third of Israel. As I said, two thirds of Israel is going to die in this judgment, as are 17 other the 17 other nations. But the elites of the other nations, they're going to be the first to go headlong into slavery. But here's Ezekiel 9 and 4. And it says, And Yahweh said unto him, Go throughout the midst of the city throughout the mists of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And unto the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the, is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So basically, if you're of the elect, which Lord willing I hope to be part of, you're going to have that mark of exemption. So you're not going to take this mark of the beast and you're not going to get caught up in the judgment and the wrath of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Um, you may be put to death as a martyr, but you know, those that die in the Lord are going to be the first to be resurrected with the Lord at his, at his coming. Now I want to get one more scripture to close this out. Isaiah 66 and 15. Because judge, great judgment is coming on this place and there's no avoiding it. You need to get right now while you've got the chance or you're going to catch the wrath, man. Because it says Isaiah 66 and 15. It says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh Plead with all flesh, and here's the point, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Let me read that again. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. So, once again, giving all praise and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, and a sincere shalom to all you, Akim, be pushing this word around the globe in faith and in truth and in sincerity. And we're coming close to the end of this thing, man. Get right now while you've got the chance, man. Don't let the day of the Lord come upon you as a thief in the night. So with that, I say, Shalom.